So hi everyone, today we are here to solve the gradient assignment for Java. Um, going through the questions, I could see it's more of a Python assignment rather than a Java one, but no worries. Uh, let's see what the first question is. So the first question says match the following and the options that we have to match are control link, activation record, scope and the lifetime. So with control link, we know that in any function call, we have a pointer to the previous activation records. So for option A, control link, the correct option matches is with this one. Then as we know, activation records has a lot of information and one of them being the value of the data, that is the local variables. So B would be option four. Scope is the region of the program where a variable is available to you utilize for any operation so that for C it would be one and lifetime is the duration in duration uh, in which a variable is available in the memory. So seeing all these things A with second, B with fourth, C with first and D with sec D with third I'm so sorry. So altogether the answer for the first question here would be option two. Okay, moving to the next question that we have, we can see that we have a class demo. It has two functions in it. One is to initialize the uh, value for the name, string name, and then print it. And we have created two objects and provided two separate string values, and then we are printing it. Since it's a straightforward question, object one is calling the print demo first, so it would be IITM, and then object two calling the print function, then it would be Java. So the answer for this question will be first. And as a good practice, I would say you to utilize any of the online forums that provides the playgrounds for various uh, languages, as I have used Replit, and this is my Python play playground. And let's see if the answer that I have provided to you is correct or not. I have a notepad in handy where I have kept these functions already written so that I can show you. And then we can verify if the answer I'm providing to you is correct or not. I'm copying it over here and then running it. As you can see, it is IOTM in Java. Okay, guys. So moving to the next question, let's see what it is. Okay, so we are given again a Python code and it is asking us to see a value. It's again a very straightforward question. Again, we can see that we are printing the value of i that is 42. And then we are calling the function f and doing the operation for a variable j. And, in, and adding to the value of i 10 units and then after that we are trying to print the value of j. Now you can see that this print j statement is not within the uh, is not within the function f. It is outside of it and this variable was defined within the function. So once the call for the function f is over this variable is not available. So if when we are trying to print that variable out of the scope of the function, it will give us an error. So the answer for this question will be three. And let's see if it is right or not. I'm again copying this code here. And then I am just preparing it. And then running it. So you can see that the, we cannot trace it back. J is not defined. Hope this is clear to you. And now. Moving to the next question it is. So, uh, we are given a function f1 and it is accepting a variable x and then 
adding and incrementing x value by 1 we are assigning the value to 1 and, and then within function 1 we have function 2 accepting the variable z and doing an operation on x and y simultaneously and then calculating the value of z so now what is being asked to us is how would be the values for these variables will be stored I mean what would be the sequence for the activation record so if we see that x and y are variables that has their scope till the time function y is in scope so since x and y are in scope till the time function 1 is in scope and this variable z is available within the scope of function 2 so function 2 activation record will be storing the value for z and for x and y it will be the scope of function 1 that will be storing the value for these two variables so x and y would be stored in the same activation record whereas z will be stored in another activation record so for the answer of this question would be option 2 okay now coming back now coming to the fifth question we have so statement one says that player is an object that has name age and role as its data and the statement two states that captain is an object that has name age role date of appointment as a captain and number of years of experience as a data so here we can see that definitely clearly that captain is an extension of the type player because it has additional two data variables that is date of appointment and number of years of experience to it so we can uh, very easily say that captain can be a subtype of player so one option would be this and player cannot be a subtype of captain because player is more generic object compared to the captain where we can say that captain is a more refined version of a player or it is a special type of player so player cannot be captain and player can be a subtype of captain no it's not right and captain cannot be a subtype of player again it's a wrong statement so here option first and four are correct okay so let's move on to the next question so here what we are given it is we are given an operation which is d equals to a minus b equal into c, into c sorry so and as per the bodmas rule we know first the variables will be multiplied and then the values will be subtracted so when if, as we know that during machine level programming what happens is we have to load the variables okay to respective registers where we where in this context we are being provided with two registers that is r1 and r2 and here we have to first have the value of b and c first in hand so let's see which statement states that first so this is the sequence the statement will be done first and then let's see what would be the second thing we have to multiply these two this would be our second statement then after doing this we have to get it value again in one of the registers okay so what would be the next one load the value from the memory location for a so this would be our third step and then we have to subtract the content of r1 and r2 r1 holds the value of b right which is the multiplicative value of b into c and 
R2 holds the value of A. So now we will subtract the content of R1 and R2 and we, we will put the value back in R1. So this is 4 and finally we are giving the result of this expression to the location D and that would be the final step. So the sequence would be 2, 4, 1, 3 and 5 and we can see that it is the option 2. So that is the correct one. So now we are moving next to the seventh question and here we are being given a question on static and dynamic typing in the context of programming. So as we know with static the variable uh, get is data type from the assigned value that is a static thing and then an initialized name has no type 